Hey everybody, Canadian Operator here, and uh, today I want to talk to you a little bit about basically becoming a firearms owner in Canada. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know that whether you're somebody who loves firearms and is already a firearms owner, and maybe you have a friend that's looking to become a firearms owner, or whether you're someone who's kind of in the middle and not sure which way to go, or perhaps you're someone who just absolutely hates the idea of civilians owning firearms in Canada, but you want to do the responsible thing and educate yourself more than what the liberal media is going to tell you on CBC, for example, then you know this, I think this is the right video for you. So if you have a friend or a family member who might be interested or who is you know very much anti-gun, I would very much appreciate you passing this video along to them as well because the point of this video is not to try to sway anyone to become a gun owner or even to accept or be okay with firearms. Uh, firearms are a very niche kind of thing, right? Like many other things in the world. And there are uh, you know, things in the world that people will love that other people will hate for various reasons. Sometimes there are political reasons behind it, religious reasons, personal reasons whatever they happen to be, right? Um, my goal in this video and in this series is not to try to sway anybody uh, to one direction or another. It's to provide uh, sort of an educated, sort of experience-based and fact-based, um, I guess, approach to teaching about what it's like to be a firearms owner. And I think with that information, you know, once you're armed with that, for lack of better words, you know, you can make the decision that's right for you. And at the end of the video, if you walk away from this video thinking, you know what, I found out more about it and, you know, I'm okay with it, but I don't want anything to do with it, then I respect your decision. And if you say, hey, this sounds really good and th this group of people sounds like they're really responsible and they just want to do the right thing and I want to become a part of that, then hey, I'm okay with that too, right? Um, so at the end of the day, uh, it really just comes down to what you want to do. And the fact that you're already here watching shows me that you're interested in learning more about firearms, whether you like them or not. And that makes you so much more of a responsible and prudent person than many, many other people who don't want to hear both sides of the story. They want to watch their news and hear about all the bad stuff in, in the news and the movies and assume that all of us are like that, which is not the case. So that being said, today I wanna to talk a little bit about the classifications of firearms that we have in Canada, as well as the different types of licenses, because if you didn't know, yes, we need to be licensed to have a firearm in Canada. So let's start talking about the classifications and then we'll talk about the licenses and how you can start the process if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so first of all, we need to talk about firearms classes or classifications of firearms in Canada. We have a few and the most, uh, I guess, uh, well-known are going to be non-restricted, restricted, and prohibited. Really, I think that's pretty much all of them anyway. Um, so non-restricted and restricted, they have various definitions and I'll try to link to an RCMP article down in the description below if you'd like to do some further reading about this. Um, but essentially, this is what it boils down to. Uh, restricted firearms are firearms that are uh, able to fold down or become smaller um, and still function that are under 26 and a half inches when they're folded down or anything that's got a barrel shorter than about 18 and a half inches. Now, these are very generalized. There are gonna be exceptions for both of these depending on the firearm. And if you've watched some of my review videos, then you might kind of understand where I'm coming from here. And uh, beyond that, a restricted firearm can also be basically any firearm that the government arbitrarily restricts just by saying that it's a restricted firearm. So there's that. Uh, I don't think that this is something that's really fair that you know would hold up in pretty much any other law just because the government says so, but it happens to be part of firearms law. And for some reason, we're still all okay with it, but that's a whole nother video. Now, non-restricted firearms are a little bit different. Non-restricted firearms are typically going to be uh, firearms that are longer than 26 and a half inches Basically, when they're in their complete form, they're not able to fold down any shorter than that, and firearms that have 18 and a half inch barrels or longer. Again, there are exceptions, but mostly for non-restricted firearms, you're talking about shotguns, rifles, and things like that, long guns, basically. And for restricted firearms, we're talking mostly about, uh, you know, sawed-off shotguns, which a lot of them are actually prohibited anyway, and, you know, uh, short-barreled rifles or SBRs, pistols, 
things like that, okay? Now, prohibited is a whole nother class, and uh, the difference between prohibited and the restricted and non-restricted is that if you're looking to become licensed for a prohibited firearm, you need to have already have that firearm f uh, basically grandfathered to you um, from the point where it was legal, and then in your possession, it became illegal by becoming a prohibited firearm. Um, so that is a whole nother can of worms that we can talk about in another video. But essentially, prohibited firearms are firearms like from the OIC in May 2020 with these assault style weapons, which the government still doesn't have a definition for, so that's convenient. Um, but <laughs> there's also a bunch of different things like the AK, for example, that was banned, I think in the 70s or potentially 80s. I think the 70s is when it was banned. Um, so things like that, right? Those are all prohibited. If you had them uh, when they were not prohibited uh, and then they became prohibited, then you needed to become licensed appropriately for that. You needed to get an upgrade to a prohibited license. Um, but essentially at this point, it just means you can no longer acquire one, you can no longer possess one. Um, and if you have one, you cannot use it in any capacity, basically. Not for hunting, not for sports shooting, nothing like that. Okay, now, uh, since now we've talked about the classifications of firearms and you get an idea of that, let's talk a little bit about licensing because again, in Canada, you do need to be licensed. It's, it's unfortunately very much unlike our neighbors to the south, uh, who I respect and um, I'm a little bit jealous of that they're just able to walk into a Walmart and pick up a 12 gauge with some ammo and go hunting the same day. You cannot do that in Canada. Okay, so in order to become a firearms owner in Canada, you need to become licensed. And before you become licensed, you need to take a course. Okay, so in order to have a non-restricted firearm, so we're talking about rifles, shotguns, things like that, your everyday long guns, right? You need to have something called a possession acquisition license. In order to get one, you need to basically register for a course. The course is called the Canadian Firearm Safety Course, and it's taught in pretty much all provinces and territories. And what's really nice about it is it's, a, it's basically a federal program, right? So whether you're in Manitoba, Yukon, PEI, you know, Ontario, wherever you happen to be, uh, the program is identical. It's exactly the same, uh, and it's uh, taught by instructors that all have to go through the same process to become instructors on the federal level, okay? So the way that you get to that course is one of two ways, in my experience. Um, there are organizations in various provinces that run them, uh, and then there are also gun clubs, gun shops, and uh, other businesses that offer them privately as well. Uh, all of their instructors basically have to go through the same thing, so it doesn't really matter where you go, uh, but if you want to get involved, I'm gonna see if I can link at least the organization responsible for Ontario down below in the description, and I'm sure there are others for your province if you're not in Ontario like I am. If you're not and you can't find any organizations that, uh, that are like that in your particular province, you might wanna go to maybe a gun club or a gun range or even a gun shop, and a lot of those guys will offer courses, they'll have their own instructors and they'll offer courses and you'll be able to take one, okay? So uh, in order to have your license, you need to take that course and you need to pass two basically facets of that, of that course uh, at 80% or above. One of them is going to be a written test uh, and one of the things that uh, you need to demonstrate, of course, is that you know a little bit about firearms, of course. Um, and not just necessarily about the different types of actions and different types of firearms. For non-restricted, they're gonna be asking you about different types uh, of firearms, rifles, shotguns, etc. different types of actions like bolt action, brake action, lever action, so you have to know the difference between those. Um, and many more things, you know, identifying what kind of cartridges go into what kind of firearm, how to work the safeties on various firearms, how to prove various firearms safe. I've actually done videos on uh, proving pistols and rifles safe. If you haven't seen that, you can go check it out up there. Uh, and yeah, it's, um, or is it up there? I think it's up there. <laughs> yeah, and so um, so you're gonna have to pass that test, uh, but your your instructor will provide more than enough information for you to be adequately prepared, and you'll have lots of time to ask questions and prepare for that test, okay? It's a one-day course, and uh, essentially, you're also going to be taking a practical test as well right at the end of the day. And again, you'll have time with your instructor to practice handling different firearms. Now, the firearms that they bring into that course, again, rifles and shotguns, they're all gonna be deactivated. They're all gonna be spray-painted blue, more than likely, or, or maybe orange to indicate that they've been deactivated, which means their firing pin has been taken out, again, for safety. So you don't have to worry necessarily that anything's gonna go off or anything. You are gonna be using dummy uh, ammunition, otherwise known as snap caps. 
Um, but of course, you still want to follow everything that you are taught in that course. And that includes things like pointing the firearm in the safe direction, whatever the safe direction happens to be, which your instructor will tell you. Um, and so for that practical test, you also need to score above 80%. Once you've done that, you have to wait a few weeks usually to get your course materials back uh, to basically prove that you've passed that uh, Canadian Firearm Safety course. And at that point is when you can start to file an application with the RCMP uh, in New Brunswick to get your possession and acquisition license. If you'd like to go through the process with me on how that's done, we can go step by step in another video. I'm not gonna do it now because it's gonna be very long-winded, but do subscribe if you'd like to see more of that and we'll go through that together in a future video. So now let's move on to the restricted, right? So if you want to have a firearm that is restricted, you need your restricted possession and acquisition license. And for that, as you probably already guessed, there's a course. It's called the Canadian Restricted Firearm Safety Course. And it deals mostly with handguns, but also uh, shorter barreled firearms as well. The majority of the stuff though is going to be uh, basically handguns. So you're going to be looking at things like single and double action revolvers, single and double action modern pistols, uh, and, and I mean that's pretty much the majority of it. And in fact, even though it's a more restricted classification of firearm, I feel like that the RPAL is, uh, or, or the restricted firearms course is actually easier to complete than the non-restricted, because the non-restricted encompasses more firearms. So, uh, once you have gotten your possession and acquisition license, you can apply for your restricted possession and acquisition license, and you can uh, take your restricted course as soon as you have your PAL. So you do actually need to have your first, your original PAL to take uh, the restricted course, the Canadian Restricted Firearm Safety course. And uh, once you've done that, then you can, uh, you know, you have to pass, of course, again, the same thing, written test and a practical test, 80% or above. And once you've passed that, then you can apply for your registered or your, your uh, um, uh, restricted uh, PAL, your uh, possession acquisition license. One thing that I should let you know is that when you're applying for your original PAL, your possession acquisition license for non-restricted firearms, those are long guns like shotguns and rifles, there is a 28 day minimum waiting period. So bef like even if you can get your application into the RCMP within a day, right, you still have to wait those 28 days at a bare minimum before they even start looking at your application. What's nice is uh, there is uh, individual web services available for the RCMP, which I, again, I'll link down below. So if you've already applied, uh, it's a place that you can check your application and see how things are going. And there's even a phone number that you can call to get updates and kind of find out, you know, what's going on. Um, for me, I took my PAL uh, basically in 2019, like I took my uh, Canadian Firearm Safety course in 2019, and I applied for my PAL in 2020 or late 2019, I think. And I think it took about six months, six, seven months or so. Um, I don't think I actually got my license until like June or July of 2020. Um, my restricted was way faster. Uh, but then again, you know, 2020, we were dealing with COVID and stuff like that as well. Um, your restricted is probably going to be faster though, because again, you don't have that mandatory 28 day waiting period. And also, you know, COVID is uh, largely a uh, thing of the past now, hopefully, <laughs> right? So... Uh, you know, that's uh, that's going to be another key factor. They're still quite busy, um, but they're doing a pretty good job getting to everything quickly. So uh, I hope that video is helpful for you and gives you an indication of you know just how much you have to go through in order to get a firearm in Canada. And I stress that because, you know, again, a lot of the things that we see in the news, in the media, um, you know, guys like Marco Mendicino, Justin Trudeau saying, we need to get these guns off the street. These guns are terrorizing people. And listen, uh, I don't disagree, right? Um, but I don't disagree when we're talking about firearms that are in the hands of gang members or criminals that are, you know, getting these things illegally and they're using them for robberies and other things like that, right? Which obviously a legal gun owner would never want to do because we have a lot to lose. We have a huge process that we need to go through. And by the way, if you didn't know, um, if you own a firearm or even if you don't own a firearm but you have a, a firearms license in Canada you are subject to a thorough background check each and every single day every single day your name gets run through databases and if anything comes up about you know um, you being violent towards anybody you being charged with anything you know like any of those things happens and without a warrant police comes to your house and they take your firearms away Okay, and then you have to prove that you're competent to own those firearms. So th there's a very complex system here in place 
to make sure that people who do own firearms are educated, they're trained, they're regularly vetted through the continuing eligibility program via the RCMP. And so there's a lot of eyes on us, right? So, you know, everybody gets frustrated. <laughs> everybody gets, uh, you know, angry sometimes or upset sometimes. But if you think about it, you know, um, people who own firearms in Canada legally are literally the least likely group of people to commit any kind of crime, to hurt anybody themselves, or do anything else, you know, with a negative connotation to it because we have so much to lose and we are constantly being watched, right? So, uh, and, and I mean, of course, because just doing bad stuff is bad. Like, don't do bad stuff. That's easy, right? <laughs> but I mean, if you needed an explanation, there you go. So in any case, before I ramble on any further, I hope that video was helpful to you. Uh, and if you did like this video and want to see more like it, I would very much appreciate a subscription. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps my channel to grow so that we can continue to help to educate people about what it's like to really be a gun owner in Canada. With that being said, though, thank you again for watching and hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.